<laughs> First, I just want to say thanks and, uh, for the opportunity and for the people from China and U.S. and get together. I hope this is just the beginning. I would like to quote the two Chinese uh, saying, and the best time to plant a tree is 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the second best time is tomorrow. That's first. The second one I would like to say is, I think we need to work together, just like somebody remind us. We have to do a good job and an everlasting job. That's another saying. You sweat more in peace than you bleed less during the war. Yeah, yeah, which means right. we need to take a lot of the preparation in order to get the job done. Anyway, I just want to say this is the very good beginning and hope it's going to last and more and more. And this is a generation. It takes more than generation or more than another generation. So I think uh, between these two countries, I think uh, if we can join hand and let the younger generation and uh, pick it up. And I think that you belong to the 21st century. That's your century. And let's work together. Thank you. Last order of business um, for the conference is that we are in the process of producing what we hope will be the Berkeley Declaration. And uh, this is a draft. We have already received some comments from uh, the participants in the program. And we hope to receive more and incorporate all of those. Um, and let me just uh, read it. It's a brief statement. Um, and, and after we've been able to incorporate all these comments, it'll be posted on our website and people will have a chance to be signatories in a virtual way uh, by, by signing on to it online. And it says the following, as participants at the China-U.S. Climate Change Forum at the University of California, we are increasingly concerned about the growing dangers posed by global warming and the lack of concerted leadership in confronting them. There is no longer any serious doubt about the principal causes and effects of global climate change. The cause is human economic activity, and the effects include greater intensity, frequency, and duration of harmful summer heat waves, sea level rise of at least half a meter by 2100 and disappearance of some island nations, melting of glaciers and sea ice, loss of alpine and arctic habitats, reduced alpine snowpack and reduced freshwater flows, coral reef degradation due to bleaching. Action is urgently needed at all levels of government, the private sector, and civil society if we are to prevent a global climate catastrophe. Decisions made today have profound implications for the climate of future generations. For example, new power generation facilities built today may be in use for 50 years or more, locking us into decades of heavy coal use. Action to address the climate crisis must be taken on the basis of common but differentiated responsibilities, a principle agreed to in the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change to which both our countries are signatories. The majority of the emissions that created today's climate crisis were produced in the industrialized world. Per capita emissions and energy use in China and other developing countries are still only a fraction of industrialized country levels, especially that in the U.S. Industrialized countries therefore bear an ethical obligation to make a contribution to reducing global greenhouse gas emissions that is proportional to their responsibility for the problem. Developing countries must do their part as well, meeting their citizens' aspirations for better living standards in a sustainable way. Despite widespread popular concern about climate change, the United States lags behind in its duties to address this pressing issue. The U.S. should sign the Kyoto Accord and work constructively to build a post-Kyoto agreement. The U.S. should also provide financial and te technical assistance to developing countries, including China, to help offset the cost of adapt adopting mitigation measures and adapting to climate change. 
China has already shown in the 1980s and 90s that it is possible for developing countries to have economic growth and reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and we are encouraged by China's current pledge to reduce the country's energy intensity by 20 percent by the year 2010. Further reductions would be possible if the U.S. and other industrialized countries fulfilled their obligations. China and the U.S. occupy the same lifeboat and share vulnerabilities to climate change and oil addiction. Cooperative action now to protect the climate is our best path to improving energy security, reducing pollution, and promoting sustainable economic development. There is no time to lose. Thank you, Jim. That is a draft, right? And so uh, suggestions are, and comments and, and uh, criticisms are welcome. Also, I wanted to ask Carter, are you about the webcast? Uh, what can we make an announcement about that? Uh, it will be up in a few days. Uh, it will be up in a few days. Yeah. Oh, say so the the web, for those of you who possibly missed one of the one or two of the talks. Um, the, the China US, www.chinausclimate.org website will have the link to the webcast. And Tom, uh, the, the uh, PowerPoint presentations that speakers have agreed to make available will also be downloadable. The and the, the PowerPoint presentations which speakers have made available will be also downloadable from the website. Okay, so. That will be. Uh, thank you all to the. Thank you to all the speakers who have uh, so generously done that. Well, I will forego my uh, my speech just to be to perform the official closing and the thank you and closing uh, function. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank all of the funders who have made this uh, forum possible, and also Dean C. S. Uh, Kyung and Dean Orville Shell, uh, and all of our colleagues at Cal and at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab uh, for their extraordinarily generous time and advice which have, have gone into pulling this conference together in less than two months. Also, I think we all owe an ex uh, just a, an immeasurable debt of gratitude to Dr. Jim Williams uh, for, for coordinating this conference, taking time off from his day job in order to do this. Also, our tech guru, Carter Brooks, uh, Kaylee Cusick and Leah Thompson, Jillian Edgelow, Joss Chin, uh, Michael Zhao, Jimmy Tran, and Julia Ch uh, Chuang, who were in charge of all of the volunteers, and our good friend uh, Daniel Spitzer. Uh, also, we want to thank very much all of the participants from China and elsewhere around the world uh, who, uh, who gave of their time and their energy to make this conference possible. I now declare the China-U.S. Climate Forum closed, and thank you all very much. <laughs>